In this video, we will explore the construction timeline of the U.S. arsenal that was built in Fayetteville, North Carolina before the Civil War. The year is 2023. All the remains of the arsenal today are the foundation stones along the western wall. But using military records and personal accounts, this video will show a conceptual rendering of what the arsenal would have looked like in 1860. But first, why was the arsenal built in Fayetteville? The War of 1812 proved to the U.S. Congress that a better system of storing and supplying weapons and equipment was needed. In 1836, Congress appropriated funds to construct four new arsenals in the southeastern coastal region. Three would be arsenals to store weapons, called arsenals of deposit, and one, a larger facility to not only store, but to produce weapons. This arsenal would be called an arsenal of general construction and deposit. Fayetteville was selected as the site of the larger arsenal. In the fall of 1836, Captain James Bradford arrived in Fayetteville to select a location. While Bradford determined the best location for the arsenal, the Ordnance Department in Washington designed the construction plans for the new facility. The plans call for a facility containing a number of buildings within the confines of a square 500 by 500 feet with towers built at each corner. Once the land was purchased, Bradford secured a workforce to quarry red sandstone and started the manufacturing of bricks. Finally, on 19 April 1838, the cornerstone of the main arsenal building was finally laid. The construction of this building would take 18 months to complete. When finished towards the end of 1839, it became the first building completed and would be used as the primary storage facility for muskets, rifles, and the accoutrements associated with the weapons. 1838 also saw the beginning of the engine house construction. Unlike the main arsenal building's fast rise, the engine house took 10 years to finish. But while it was ready in 1848, it would not have a steam engine until 1858 when a 30 horsepower engine made in Massachusetts was installed. Once installed, the engine would power the belt-driven equipment at the arsenal. Over the course of the next 20 years, the construction tempo would ebb and flow as construction levels decreased or increased. In fact, debates and concerns were raised over the mission of the arsenal. Would it be a large arsenal or just a storage facility? In the end, funds were allocated to complete the arsenal as originally intended. Four more buildings were started in 1839. The Northwest Tower was constructed and ready for use by 1840. It would function as the arsenal's main office building until 1853. It was originally constructed with a flat copper roof, which leaked after a few years. A new sloped copper roof was installed in 1858. The officers' quarters number one was started in April or May and was completed in 1841. This two-story structure became the residence of the arsenal's commanding officer. The forging, filing, and casting shops were housed in one long building and construction began sometime in 1839. This building contained three separate shops and was completed in 1842. The Smith shop, which was adjacent to the forging, filing, and casting shops, began construction at around the same time and was also completed in 1842. While no new construction was started in 1840, the barracks along the north side of the complex began being built in 1841. The two-story barracks was originally intended to have a gated archway constructed in the middle of the building and would serve as the main entrance to the facility. Period writings note that the archway was constructed as planned, but a new formal entrance gateway would be erected on the eastern side of the facility. 
The barracks will be completed and ready for enlisted soldiers by the end of 1842 or early 1843. The construction of the Southeast Tower began in early 1842 and was completed by 1846. It had a flat copper roof that was replaced in 1860. The gun carriage and turning shop along the western side of the complex was started and completed in late 1848 or early 1849. This facility was used for large wooden fabrication and the assembly of gun carriages. There were no new construction began in 1843, 1844, or 1845. So we will jump ahead to 1846 when construction began on the timber store number one. It was located on the south side of the arsenal. The structure was completed in 1849. The next building where work began was the carriage store and paint shop, located along the south side of the complex. Construction started in late 1848 and it was completed in late 1851 or early 1852. The gun carriage store and coal house on the north side next to the barracks also began construction in late 1848 and was completed in late 1851 or early 1852. This building had wood planked floors for gun carriage storage and cement grouted brick floors for coal storage. Two new buildings were started in 1849. First was the armorer's shop on the south side of the complex and was started in mid-1849 and completed by 1852. The building was also used as a tinner's shop and harness maker's shop. The northeast tower was started in late 1849 or the beginning of 1850. It was finished in 1853 and would become the arsenal's main office building. In 1860, the flat canvas roof was replaced with a copper roof. The Southwest Tower was started in 1850. Construction was in two phases, with the outside of the structure going up in about a year. The interior and finishing work would continue until the spring of 1856. The original roof was copper covered and sloped to aid in drainage of rainwater. This design became the example for the other towers when their roofs needed to be replaced. The officers' quarters number two, located near the northwest corner of the complex, began construction in the early months of 1852. The building's exterior was completed by 1857. While the officers' quarters were under construction, the adjoining kitchen, pantry, dining room, and laundry was also being built. It was completed by 1857. Both of these buildings would have stayed empty until the arrival of Captain Anderson and the soldiers of Company D of the 2nd U.S. Artillery. There are a few additional structures, buildings, and details that should be mentioned. In the early years of construction, a simple wooden fence surrounded the perimeter to secure the area from pilferage. Starting in 1848, work began in a stronger fence consisting of a low wall of stone and brick topped with a strong iron paling. The total height of the wall and paling was seven feet. The wall was not fully completed until after the start of the Civil War. The roofs of the buildings were either covered with slate, sheet iron, tin, or copper. The buildings were painted with a light yellow wash and the stonework trim appears to have been left natural brownish or painted a similar color. Other structures were built outside the complex walls and some even within the walls during the Civil War. But this last image of the arsenal represents the grounds as they would have appeared before the Civil War. It is here in 1858 we end this simulation and moved to the 1980s in the construction of the new highway.